you know, because you hear these dough-headed, that's a very minor word, people who are always pushing happiness as the, as the key measure for, for successful existence. It's so ill-informed that it's embarrassing that that even happens. Jordan Peterson often declares his opposition to the pursuit of happiness as the purpose of life. And he compares happiness, contrasts it with meaningfulness. So today I wanted to explain what meaningfulness means and why this is so evil and destructive. So first, let's talk about happiness. I think people have a little bit better grasp on what happiness means as compared to the vague and unclear term meaningfulness. But it's worth making clear the objectivist view on this anyway. Happiness is the feeling of non-contradictory joy, Ayn Rand called it. It's the feeling that flows from the achievement of your values, rational values, and since they're rational, they don't contradict each other. It's not like being altruistic. If you're altruistic, you have to get a job to make money, for instance, in order to survive and to continue being able to do anything, but making money is also selfish. So you have this contradiction between uh, morality and practicality. Now that doesn't exist uh, for egoism. And happiness is what you feel when you have achieved your values and thereby proven to yourself that you are capable of achieving values and can expect to continue achieving them in the future. It is the feeling you get when you have sex or have an orgasm. Not the physical pleasure, but the feeling of metaphysical competence. It's like uh, Luke Skywalker in the first Star Wars movie saying, I feel like I could take on the whole empire myself. That's happiness. Or Cyrano de Bergerac when he says, I have ten hearts. I have a hundred arms. I feel too strong to war with mortals. Bring me giants. That's happiness. That's this I can do anything feeling. The universe is open to my values. I can achieve values. That's what happiness is, but as a consistent background emotion, an ever-present background emotion. It can come to the front uh, sometimes, such as during sex, but it's always there in the background. You still feel sadness, frustration, but it lessens those things. Uh, it gives you a perspective, a feeling that those things are unusual. And it makes your joys all the greater. So that's what happiness is. Now let's contrast this with meaningfulness. Well, first, what does it mean to be meaningful? What does it mean to mean anything? What does meaning mean? Well, you can think about this in the case of words. What does it mean for a word to mean something? Like a table. What does the word table mean? Well, the word table means the physical object we call table. Meaning means to refer to something in the real world. So table is just a noise as a word, but it means, it refers to this thing in reality. So when Jordan Peterson advocates meaningfulness as contrasted with happiness, what he's saying is, don't just feel good. <laughs> Have a psychological, emotional state that refers to something you actually did in the real world refers to a difference you've made, some action you've taken that's made a difference. Not just this um, pleasure, good feeling that is disconnected from the real world. Well, the problem with this 
is that all emotions, all feelings, are meaningful. It's actually impossible to have a meaningless feeling. Now, let's take the example of fear. Fear is the feeling that your values are at risk, are threatened, that you might lose something you value. So if somebody pulls a gun on you in a dark alley, you will feel fear because you think you might lose the value that is your life. Or if you make a major mistake at work, you might fear that you're going to lose your job. Your job is a value along with the money it brings you and whatever else. So fear is the feeling that your values are at risk. Now, take a moment and try to experience fear without that implicit propositional content. Just the feeling, not the idea that your values are threatened. Just think about how fear feels in itself without that idea that your values are threatened. You can't do it. Because that is what fear is. It is inherent to the feeling. That is what the feeling is. It's like try it's like taking a green ball and trying to remove the greenness from the ball, not painting it a different color or washing the paint off, but taking the greenness away from the ball. And, oh, here's the greenness over here now. No, the greenness is an attribute of the ball inseparable from it. And the same thing here, although with a non-material, uh, in a non-material situation. You cannot take the idea away from the emotion. Fear is that feeling. Even for a child, or perhaps for most of you watching, you've probably never identified explicitly what fear means in verbal terms, that it means your values are at risk. So, even for somebody who hasn't identified that fact, that's still what fear is. You recognize the truth of what I'm saying right now, because even before you identified it, that's what fear is. Even for a child who can't yet understand this idea, even for an animal, a dog who feels fear over his abusive owner coming home. Now, it's impossible for that dog to uh, name explicitly <laughs> what fear means. Animals are too stupid, although dogs are pretty smart for animals. Definitely smarter than cats. Um, but it's impossible for that dog to name the meaning of fear, and yet he is still feeling that his values are at risk, are under threat. So there's, there's no divorcing meaning from a feeling. Now, this is not to say that the statement an emotion makes, or a feeling makes, is always true. Clearly, they aren't. You can feel fear about something that wasn't really a threat to you. Or you can eat something poisonous that tastes good. So it's not that the statements your emotions make are always true, but it is that they always make statements. Now, the meaning of happiness with which Jordan Peterson contrasts meaningfulness is, as I said before, that you are competent to live in reality, that you are capable of achieving your values, that you fit metaphysically into this world. That is the meaning of happiness. I've achieved my values. I can expect to continue achieving them. That is what happiness means. That's the statement that feeling is making. Well, what does Jordan Peterson's meaningfulness mean? What does that actually mean? What emotional or psychological state is he even talking about? If it's not happiness, and it's not, because he always contrasts these two. 
He says, don't, don't go after mere happiness. Okay, it's okay uh, if you happen to get it, but you can't expect it, and it's not what's most important anyway. What's important is meaningfulness. So what is this? Well, first, I want to make clear that he does not simply mean happiness, and he's just using a different word for it. He is not doing that. I answered a question on my podcast recently about when to use a different word versus when to keep a word when there is uh, confusion over what the word means or when there is a negative connotation associated with a concept you want to defend. And I said that, for instance, changing from capitalism to free market was a bad idea because you are changing the word while keeping the referent of the concept the word designates. And what Jordan Peterson does is the opposite. He keeps the word, but changes the referent. He does this with God, for instance, all the time. Talks about God, and then when people ask him what he means by that, he says, oh, the highest moral principle. Now, that is fraudulent. That is dishonesty. And I don't care if Jordan Peterson sees this video and says, oh, no, what I mean by uh, meaningfulness is what you're talking about, happiness. Just a semantic difference. No, it isn't. If that's what he meant, he would use the word happiness. But he doesn't. And it's because he doesn't mean happiness. It would be like if I went around calling you a murderer and then you stopped me and said, all these people are hearing these rumors that I'm a murderer. What are you doing? And then I said, oh, well, by murderer, I just mean somebody who gives out candy on Halloween. That's what I mean by murder. That is dishonest. You know damn well what people understand murder to mean. You know that people don't take God to mean highest moral principle, that they take it to mean supernatural being, and you are counting on that. So I don't care what Jordan Peterson says. He does not mean what I'm calling happiness when he says meaningful. The very fact that he sets this up as even possibly oppositional, not even oppositional necessarily, but that you can divorce meaning from happiness is just wrong on its face. So clearly, he does not mean happiness. He does not mean what objectivists consider happiness. It's not that, oh, well, he's just talking about uh, this conception of uh, happiness as hedonism or pleasure, although he does throw it in with those two things, which is disgusting, bordering on nihilistic, I think. I'll have to do another video about that. But uh, clearly, he does not have the same concept in mind, and he's just uh, <laughs> using a different word. No, but he does mean something specific by meaningfulness. So what does he mean? Well, you would have to think, what exactly would it mean to feel meaning, but not happiness? Because he thinks this is something you should pursue, even though it won't feel good like happiness does. So, so you get some sense of meaning that comes from doing something moral, but it doesn't necessarily feel good. It's not frivolous happiness, divorced from meaning. Well, what kind of phenomenon is that? Do we ever see this phenomenon? And the answer is yes, we do. And we see it precisely when people take religious ethics, altruism, seriously. This is the feeling that comes about when you take moral actions that are impractical. That is when you can feel a sense of meaning, that you've done something good and right, you've taken some meaningful action in the world, but it doesn't make you happy. So you have the meaning without the happiness. That is what Jordan Peterson is talking about. That hollow, miserable feeling that somebody like Mother Teresa had. It's well known by now that she was miserable and had doubts about God and uh, didn't like what she was doing, and that's exactly what you would expect. 
She was doing the right thing, being a moral person, but under the conception that, under the idea that selflessness is what's moral. So when you have the moral versus the practical and you choose the moral, what you get is this kind of hollow, miserable feeling. You get this feeling of assuaged guilt. It's not exactly a positive feeling, which is why Jordan Peterson differentiates it from happiness. But it is a kind of feeling, but it's a <laughs> negation of a negative. It's instead of feeling like a totally immoral monster, you at least don't feel bad. You feel at least some kind of something close to moral neutrality because you've done something good, even though it's not good for you and it makes you miserable because it involves giving up your values. You've assuaged your moral guilt. Now, taking Jordan Peterson's broader perspective into account, this makes perfect sense. Jordan Peterson is always saying that the purpose of life is to make things a little bit less miserable. Not to be happy, not to make things good, but the whole purpose of your life, the whole basis of feeling that you've done something meaningful is that you've made things a little bit less bad. So it shouldn't surprise you that uh, his conception of the emotional state you should be aiming for is this kind of miserable negation of a negative. Is this kind of, well, at least I don't feel <laughs> like a totally abject, horrible person. That's what he says is the whole point of life. And he says, don't worry so much about happiness. Now he, point, he frames this as, uh, you're not likely to get happiness and so don't worry about it too much. Which he better at least do that because in fact what he's advocating that you do crowds out the possibility of happiness. You will never be happy if you take the kinds of actions Jordan Peterson advocates that you take. He says, you know, the people who, are, who really have a sense of meaningfulness are the kinds of people who at least take care of themselves and then go on and take care of other people. And for him, this goes up the more selfless it gets, the broader you get. So first it's, you know, it's merely yourself. Then it's your family. Then it's your community. And then it's broader and the whole of mankind. And who knows, maybe every uh, sentient species in the whole universe then you would be really meaningful. So if you take that as your moral standard, that the more selfless you are, uh, the more meaningfully you're acting, well, then Jordan Peterson damn well better convince you that happiness doesn't matter too much because you're not going to experience any of it. So if he wants you to go after meaningfulness, then you better not care about happiness too much. So anyway, it's just no surprise that uh, this sense of meaningfulness is this empty feeling of having done your duty even against your own self-interest, because that is exactly what Jordan Peterson advocates. And so when he's talking about, well, what, what emotional state should I advocate that corresponds to what I'm telling people to do? Take moral actions that aren't in your own self-interest. Well, the, the psychological emotional state that corresponds to that is something you might call meaningfulness. It's this feeling that, yeah, I did it. I did what I was supposed to do. In fact, I did what I was supposed to do. I feel awful, but I did what I was supposed to do. And that's the feeling you get when you take religious ethics seriously, when you take Jordan Peterson's ethics seriously. And so Jordan Peterson is just being consistent and saying, yeah, that's good. That's the emotional state you should aim for. But it isn't the emotional state you should aim for. You should aim for the exalted, heroic feeling I talked about earlier. And that feeling comes from going after your own selfish values, not taking responsibility for other people and carrying their burdens, but going after what you want and achieving that. Then you will feel Good. You will feel this marriage of practicality and morality. I cannot overstate how important it is.
because this is very common. People, they want uh, the practical benefits of being selfish or doing things for themselves, but then they feel miserable because they think they're acting immorally. And then some people, they need to feel moral. Everybody needs both of these, these things, really. Some people go after morality, but they feel the kind of misery I just described. But the truth is, you can and really have to have both. You can feel moral for going after your own values. That union is unbeatable. It's what makes life worth living. If you feel a sense of moral heroism from having a selfish goal and then achieving it, that is what life is all about. Happiness is meaningful. The meaning of happiness is that you can live in this world and this world is good and you are good. That is what happiness means and it comes from actually, in fact, achieving your values. Happiness is not meaningless. This is just what Jordan Peterson wants to frame it as because he takes this dichotomy as well. I mean, you can have meaningfulness and not feel good, or you can feel good, but it's this frivolous thing that doesn't really refer to reality. Happiness is just this it's mere pleasure. It doesn't refer to any facts of reality. It does refer to facts of reality. Happiness feels good, and it refers to the fact that you are metaphysically competent. <laughs>